Today I'm visiting Ideal Cheese Shop, a neighborhood favorite on the Upper East Side of New York City. You like Brie? Go find out, right? And despite their multi-decade success, they're having trouble making ends meet. So we got Penforte, Amaretti. Look, I love working with family businesses, but I never know what sort of relationship dynamic I'm walking into. The minute I walk through the door, I'm stunned by this smell. It didn't smell great. How, How you doing? How are you? I'm Marcus. Michael, pleasure to meet you. Michael, nice to meet you. There's an interesting scent in here. Yes, it is a, a pretty heavy aroma. I don't smell it at all. It's strong. Oh, we're cheese guys, we smell nothing. How you doing? I'm Marcus. Josh, nice to meet you. Nice Marcus. to meet you. Hi, Marcus. Julius. Nice Julius, to meet nice you. to meet you. This is Angela. Hi, Marcus. Really Hello. nice to Same meet you. Here. How long has the business been here? In April. It'll be 20 years. In this in location? In this location, right. yeah. But the, but the company has existed for how long? And when did you guys buy it? 16 years ago. We do kind of three businesses in one. So we have the retail shop, second one is online, and then the third one is a wholesale business where we sell to restaurants and hotels. We have 5,000 restaurants in Manhattan that we can sell to. How many do you service? Uh, probably like 65, so 0.1%. Oh, it was <laughs> smaller than I thought it would be. Yeah, so we, but it's Did still, you lose customers over the years? Uh, it, that's the area that you know, spikes and valleys, bit depending on where we are in the time frames. How many types of cheese are there? Oh my God. Probably 10,000. In France alone, there's over 5,000 cheeses. What's your favorite cheese? Yeah, don't get scared. You will like it. <laughs> it's called Brebis Russe. It's really good. It's your favorite? One of my favorites right now. How many total cheeses in the shop? A couple hundred from about 17 different countries. One of the first companies to really go heavily into European cheese. What is your favorite cheese in the whole place? The Moloturno. This one's from Italy, but this is wrapped in the Barola grape leaf. You like the Molotano? Molotano? Look at him. You like so that's the a blend of cow, goat, and sheep. <laughs> pungent? Yeah, too pungent. It's a Not little bitter. Favorite. I went to school in Wisconsin, and I was wondering, like, where's all the Wisconsin cheese? Because every cheese that's here is some sort of fancy cheese. Now, I know there's a market for that, but there has to also be a market for, like, regular people cheese? Right here? Can you give me a little tour of the store? Sure. Basic premises that we work behind here. Manchego, very popular. Nice Sheep's milk Manchego. cheese from La Mancha. Full array of cheeses here and behind. Our blue cheese selection back behind you. Why does it seem inventory light? I intentionally do it like that, you know, to pay the bills properly. Is cash properly. tight? Yes. It is tight. I thought it was odd that he recognized that there was only a couple hundred cheeses out of 10,000 plus, and he's a specialty cheese shop? That was alarm bell number one. Olives back here. So that's a cutery section. Dry sausages, sopasata, monserrano. Limited beer selection. Limited olive oil. Yeah. So we have four Limited lines beer. of different pastas. A little grocery. Right. Of the total revenue for the store, which is how much? About one five. Right. Or how much comes from dry goods versus cheese? Eighty percent. <gasps> cheese. When you have a storefront in a city like New York where rent is extremely high. Every square inch of your space matters. In this case, 80% of the store revenue is coming from cheese sales, while 20% is coming from packaged goods. But unfortunately, more than 50% of the space is dedicated to those dry packaged goods. Allocating floor space and the assortment of products is crucial to a business being successful. So what was your business to be able to do this? Uh, I was in the courier service business. Okay. 27 years. Did you work in that business with yes. them? Yes. And have you guys always worked together? My, my entire life. Your dad seems like an easy guy to work with. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Wait a minute. He, did he hesitate? <laughs> no, he's not, no, not so easy. He's not so easy. No. I think that Michael would work better without me. I'm ready to kind of take a step back. Oh. Not on site, so you know he lives in Florida, so I'm day-to-day -day operator. Years. Why can't he buy you out? Yeah, so we've had some broad-based discussions over the years, but there was no motivation for him to do it as the controlling interest partner. So it's 50-50? 70-30. You? you have 70? No. He is 70. He put in 100% of the money. And you get a wage in addition to your equity? No. The, and, it, and it doesn't change year to year, so it's like an employee. See, that's where he feels like. So I am an employee. Okay. You can sense from Michael that he's frustrated about his financial arrangement with his dad. Not a comfortable position for anybody to be in. Why haven't you come up with a plan to transition the ownership of the business to your son? I have. 
I've been looking to see if I he could says find... No. no. He's just looking to try to sell it. I, He's no, never would... I've been looking to find a partner for the last two years. That's the truth. But why haven't you sat down with him and said, okay, I want to sell you the business. Right. Because I'm not sure if he would accept that as a possibility. Well, maybe maybe seven or ten years ago we, we would have done that. What about now? I don't know. Where the business has fluctuated a little bit, it's probably turned me off a little bit and more turned me on. But I still see positives in what we well, can do to it. Is there a lot of debt in the business? Yes. yes. Where'd that come from? The other cheese shop out on Long Island. You had a cheese shop out in Long Island? Yeah, a we restaurant, had a restaurant and cheese shop. Cheese, coffee, all and in one. What happened? It closed? Oh, yeah. yeah. How much did you lose? 300. So has it accumulated new debt? Oh, yeah. And how much is the debt now? About 400. Oh, wow. There's a lot of debt on this current business, but the genesis was from another cheese shop that the family decided to open on Long Island. And when that business failed, the burden came back to the original cheese shop, and it's dramatically hurting its ability to grow. Hi, sir. Welcome. Hey, how are you? The best store in New York. <laughs> best Thank store. Great. great for the neighborhood. We Thank really you. Really appreciate Thank it. you. Thank you so much. I paid him to say that. Yeah. <laughs> you can go and help him. Put us complete. I'll box it up. Sure. What else for you? Thank you. Have a good day. The validation of customers walking in and out of this store all day long is mind blowing. This is Michael with Ideal Cheese. How are you today? But I thought it was odd that I see Michael on his feet working, and Julius, who owns seventy percent of the business, he's fussing on his phone. I love the fact that you're committed to helping your dad. I mean, I work here, I like here, but I just need it to be different. What does different mean? It, it's built up, you know, frustration. It's seven days a week, it's 12, 13, 14 hours a day. So it's been a grind. And what do you think your dad ultimately wants out of this scenario? And I think he feels some pressure right now, too. I've told him that I want to quit. I tell my mom I want to quit. He goes, well, you own the business. I said, okay, you come and run it. Oh, by the way, are you thinking about investing? Well, that's good. I just want you to know I'm thinking about quitting. Can you do me a favor? Grab the financials, your mom and dad, sure. and let's go around the corner. We'll sit outside and no go problem. through it. Plus. This is a 50-year-old-plus business in a great neighborhood in New York City with millions of people to serve. You and I will sit yeah. together. And at this particular moment, the lack of passion that Michael's exuding is almost like a death sentence for the business. All right, so last year, a million four seventy-two in revenue, gross profit of 542, so just a little over 34%. Credit card interest, 11 grand. Finance charge, 8 grand. Yeah, just keep going. Line of credit, 11 grand. Total interest expense, $31,000. Your rent is 185,000. And so on paper, the business only makes 28 grand. Correct. Right. And what is the revenue done over the years? Yeah. 16, it did a million seven. 17, it did a million seven. 18, it did a million four. In the last 12 months, it's down 300 grand. Yeah, we lost Correct. a big account. Total cash right now in the bank? About 10,000. And what are the total payables? 70. What about receivables from vendors? 70. They're Somewhere almost equal. How much debt is there? About 400. The, about 400,000. Yeah. Okay. People could argue that the company's insolvent, which means essentially bankrupt. If you don't solve the debt or put money in, the business is closed. The debt is suffocating the business. Correct. Correct. And, and that, that debt wasn't really generated from, from the, the business. business's mistakes. I say that every day. I shouldn't be getting phone calls that I owe money to people. The problem is that you're in quicksand right now. And unless the business has an infusion in capital, it's going to close. I don't disagree. If the gross profit and earnings of the business are the only mechanism to solve the debt in this particular scenario, there's no way out. So either new money comes in, the debt gets reorganized, or the business closes. And if the business closes, what happens with the debt? I probably declare personal bankruptcy. Your wife is totally freaked out that you said that. Yes. Am I right? You are 100% Because he said it very right. casually. Yeah. I, you know, I, I... Uh-oh. Well, it's a serious thing. <laughs> 